Your words carry weight. Your silence, your absence, your presence, your presentation, it carries weight. And when I say that, I not only mean that it speaks volumes for you, but it also carries weight on how you feel about yourself, the direction you're going, the impact you'll have on other people, and your overall purpose at play. And I have not been on here in a minute. And I know in the past I've talked about being still or the importance of learning lessons and just taking everything in. But I feel like it's so heavy on me today because I think a lot of people do not understand, number one, the strategy in our lives that God places, and also why we have to do things and learn things in the order at which we do. And if you are a person that is new to your faith or new to inner work or new to that journey of growth and healing, the beginning of your journey is going to be filled with so much discomfort. It's going to be filled with a lot of revelation. It's going to be filled with a lot of tests. But the purpose of that is for you to gain endurance, maturity, revelation, detoxing, addressing yourself so that when it's time for you to really move forward, when it's time for you to really be bold, when it's time for you to show up and do what you're here to do, you have self-control, you have wisdom, you have endurance, you have patience, you're not easily provoked. And that's why I wanted to talk to you about two things today, your season of being still and your season of being bold. And if you are someone that has been reading my books over the years, the season of being still is almost hammered into your brain because that season lasted so long for me. And in many ways, it's, I still have to apply that, okay? But the season of being still was ordered, okay? It's not like I just wanted to shut down from life, not speak to people, all this, no. When God instructs you to be still, he's doing it for two reasons. He's trying to protect you and he's trying to prepare you for something. And when you're in that season, when I tell you that you are gonna be tested mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, you're gonna have revelation about your mindset, your heart, your perspective, your environment, the people in your life, your purpose, it's not a fun time. But that season of being still is so important because that is your opportunity to correct yourself, to correct the, the playing field around you, to correct the battlefield in your mind. And when you're in that season of being still, God is gonna show you, you have a weakness here. He's gonna let you be tested. He's gonna let you be triggered. He's gonna let you see things as they are. Not simply how you want them or you expect them to be. Because the bigger lesson is, I have to take some things away from you before I give you some things. I have to purge and prune you so I could prepare you for some things, so I could properly position you. And in that season of being still, you're gonna realize that your journey is gonna have far few people in seats than you expected. In that season of being still, you're gonna have times where you are so, your, your spirit is holding on to those words, be still, and your flesh just wants you to set it off so bad. But there's a purpose in that. You're gonna hear conversations about you that you're not gonna intervene. You're not going to offer a rebuttal. You're not going to correct, confirm, deny, nothing. Because God's going to want you to see what people not only say when you're not around, but also how far they go if they think you'll never hear it. He wants you to see who's there for you in your time of suffering and success. He wants you to see, are you going to panic under pressure or are you going to fix things? Are you going to fix yourself? And I wrote notes on this because y'all, I've been all over the place and if you can tell that ding just threw me off. But being still really is the time for that frustration for you. 
It's that time for that silence. It's that time for that revelation. It's that time for correction and endurance and maturity. And it's that time that you realize that your silence, though misinterpreted, misunderstood, and mishandled, it will never be misquoted. It will always show you so much more about you. And it will also show you more about everything going on around you when you just close your mouth and open your eyes. When you just accept for reality for what it is. When you realize that you are a toxic person in your own ways and instead of pointing fingers and expecting other people to act a certain way or do a certain thing or come through for you, you start coming through for yourself and you work on yourself and you address yourself and you realize that even if I have no one and nothing, as long as I have myself and I'm straight and I know who my people are and who they're not and I know that God's with me no matter who isn't, you're good. You have that maturity. You have that wisdom. You have that enlightened perspective. And as you're gaining that, as you're accepting that, and as you're going with that, a lot of people are not going to understand at all. They're going to take your silence for weakness. They're going to take your silence as admission. They're going to take your silence as fear. They're going to take it for so many things. And a lot of times when you're being silent and still, you realize what people say or project is literally just a mirror of them. So if you're silent and you're still and you're in your season of isolation and you're in your season of inner work and people are immediately insulted or they blame you for things or they claim things over your life or assume things, let that also be a revelation to you that that's what's in them. Again, being still is about revelation and correcting yourself. But the beautiful part about being still, no matter how long that season lasts, whether it's months, years, a decade, God will always make it very clear to you when you've graduated from that season. Because he'll, he'll test you and he'll reveal things to you, but he'll also show you too. You don't need to clap back, but it's time for you to speak. It's time for you to share. It's time for you to give your testimony. It's time for you to be unapologetic about the truths of your life. It's time for you to take off that weight and that baggage that you're carrying that was never yours to carry, that you never deserved, or that was never intended for you. Because when you're in a season of bold, you realize that's the season of speaking. That's the season where you can share all the things that you learned in your silence. That's the season where you can look back on your frustrations and see the fruit that came from it. You can really see truly the amount of patience and gentleness and self-control and understanding that you possess. You now see the fruits that those frustrations left you. You can see that revelation within you, around you, was all tied together so that you can rise to the occasion, so that you can level up mentally, spiritually, emotionally, professionally, personally. And that all those things that you corrected within yourself, that were confirmed within you, now you can confirm them in other people. Now you can share them. Now you can talk to a person without being overly emotional or being provoked or being agitated or being offended and say, this is the truth of my experience. This is what I've learned. This is what I've been through. And I see that you're here. Now let me help you get out. I see that you're here. Well, let me help you navigate those emotions, navigate those feelings, navigate this season of your life. Because I've been there. Because I know what it's like. And I get it. Every single thing that you go through, there's there's a purpose for it. And I used to hear that and I, it would, I would roll my eyes so hard because I would literally sit there and be like, I don't understand how. How are things that aren't fair part of the plan? Or I, I'd get angry with God because I'd say, well, God, you, you tell me that vengeance is yours and you're going to do all these things. Do your thing, Jesus. Like <laughs> you're sitting there so upset. And not realizing that God is not changing things around you, not changing people around you, not changing circumstances around you, because overall, what he's trying to change is you and your mindset and the way you move and the way you think and the things that you do. 
you can share that now because that's not just a story or just something you've read online or that reminds you of a movie. That's your life. You've lived that. You've endured some things. You've learned some things. You've, take some, you've taken some L's that were rightful, like they were not rightfully yours. Your silence really, you realize that I'm either gonna come out of this with the patience of a saint or maybe I should join the Crips. That's, maybe that was your point. Maybe that was that place for you at some time. But now that you realize it was for your wisdom and your, your overall good, you really look back and you're like, I needed all that. Was it right? Was it fair? Was it okay? Was it fun? Would I wanna go through that again? Heck no. But the person that came out of that, the mindset that came out of that, the, the heart, the empathy, the understanding, the ability to not take projection personally, the ability to be provoked, insulted, offended, and instead of clapping back or going off or coming back with a low blow, you hit people with the... You've earned that. You've earned it. It's yours. And no, not everyone's going to see that in you. Not everyone's going to appreciate that in you. Not everyone's going to acknowledge that in you. But you know that to be true. You know that God literally sent and allowed. He sent people. He allowed the enemy to send people. He allowed you to fail. He allowed you to go through all these things. Because if you handle it right, if you give things to him, if you learn from it, if you apply those lessons, he won't only trust you, but he will, he will take you places, have your name mentioned in rooms, put you in levels that don't even make sense because you were obedient and you learned how to be still. You learned how to, to take the lesson. You learned how to see the bigger picture. You learned how to share with people. You learned how to use what was intended to destroy you to develop your character, to develop your testimony, to develop your mindset, to develop your platform and your purpose. You did that. And the same goes to things that you might look back and have regrets on and say, man, I, I wish I would have handled this a different way. Because we all do that, right? Especially as we grow, we look back and say, oh, had I said this or not said this, I would have tried to do this or by trying to fix this, I made this worse and blah, blah, blah. That was allowed to. Because even in that, you gain empathy because it gives you a lot, you, it changes the amount of grace and mercy you give to people when you see yourself. When you look at how someone handles something and say, you know what, that wasn't okay, that was petty, that was immature, but you also remember that there were times that you did and said things that were not okay, that you didn't said things that were petty, that were immature, that you didn't said things that weren't right, but you learned and you grew. And even if people never learn and grow, maybe people hurt you knowingly and unknowingly. Maybe they'll never acknowledge it. Maybe they'll never apologize for it. You'll be at this place where you realize it's not about you. That was a catalyst. That was a teaching opportunity. That was my testimony in motion. Because it's not about everybody else and how they treat you all the time or how they make you feel. It's what you get from it. It's your response to that revelation that really leads you to rise in your life. It's your response to having the world seemingly be so loud, but you still sit there and you quietly soak it in and you quietly learn from it and you quietly embrace what God's trying to do in your life. So be bold. And use, a, use someone said God is calling again. Someone is calling. Someone is faxing. Um, but use all that. Remember, use all that was, that was confirmed to you to be confirmation. Not only just for you, but for other people. Use what you endured to empathize with someone. Encourage them, empower them, educate them. And use all that mess, all that mayhem, 
all that maturity you gained to minister to someone else, to really come through for someone else and to show other people that there are good people out there. There are people that will see your vulnerability and pray for you and not pray on it. There are people that will see you in time of weakness and if you can't take the step ahead, well, they'll carry you or they'll intercede for you or they'll come through for you because they not only see the level that they've risen on, but they never forget the valley that they were in and the ways in which they learned their lessons. So remember that today, whether you're in a season of being still and God is really working on you or you're in therapy and you're going through it, going through that emotional roller coaster of just unpacking and seeing things as they are and being so tempted to put on that weight of condemnation and guilt or regret or resentment or bitterness, but also knowing too that where there's conviction and repentance and understanding and, and lessons learned, you don't, that's not for you to carry. Forgive yourself and other people. If you're gonna hold on to the lessons, you gotta let go of the pain that brought them. And understand that every single thing that you're going through, every single thing that you've been through, everything that you've done or said, whether it was right or wrong, had a positive or negative impact, there's a purpose in that. You might not see it now, you might not want to accept it now, and it might be things that you are still so hurt and so angry about, you don't, you don't want to touch it. Do things at the pace at which you're supposed to, be obedient, and don't let all the noise around you lead you to miss out on what God's telling you and showing you. The world, the world can look like all these things and people can promise things to you. People can claim to have your back or no one has your back or your best interests at heart like God. And the sooner that you realize that and accept that, the sooner you will grow, the sooner you will heal, the sooner you will move forward, and the sooner you will pursue your purpose unapologetically and without explanation. So stay focused, keep the faith, and know that you're seeing this for a reason. You're enduring all of this for a reason. You're at this point in life for a reason. Just like your words carry weight, don't waste them. Know when to be still and silent and know when to stand and speak. The people that are meant to have that confirmation will see you, they'll accept it. And if they're not meant, they're gonna just, they might clown you, oh well. But the people that it's intended for, I promise, it's gonna change their life and it's gonna change yours too. And at that point, it really won't matter what other people say, think, believe, spread, or do to you. Because when God's hand is on your life, I'm telling you, nothing anyone puts on you will stick. And I mean that. So hold on to those words. Remember that yours carry weight and know that there are seasons for a reason. Obey, and I promise you will come out of them far better than when you walked in. So I love you, have a great weekend, and we'll talk again soon.